is Mikhail Schlumpf, and I'm a research scientist in the Litvak lab here in the Department of Biology. I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of nine flux towers that form the New Mexico elevation gradient. This is run by the Litvak lab and supported in part by the LTER. Six of these flux towers occur in the footprint of the Sevieta LTER. There are two in dry grasslands, like this one here, one in a creosote shrubland, one in a juniper savanna, and two in pinion juniper woodlands. These towers have been running for 15 years now, providing long-term continuous measurements of how much carbon, water, and energy is exchanged between the land surface and the atmosphere. The key questions we want to answer are, how will changes in climate variance and mean affect ecosystem-specific biogeochemical processes and alter biophysical feedbacks? So to get there, we need to know how much carbon is sequestered by different ecosystems and when most of the sequestration occurs and also how the amount, timing, and variability of available water influences carbon sequestration and water dynamics in each of these ecosystems. So to answer these questions, we mount instruments above the plant canopy and simultaneously measure CO2 and water vapor concentrations using an infrared gas analyzer, and also three-dimensional wind speed and direction using a sonic anemometer. We then use a method called eddy covariance, calculate the net movement of CO2 and water vapor between the atmosphere and the land surface. This dense time series allows us to quantify the carbon and water dynamics for five of the different ecosystems that intersect at the Sevieta. In addition to the fundamental eddy covariance data, we also measure a raft of environmental variables to help us understand the controls on ecosystem metabolism. Precipitation, detailed radiation measurements, temperature and relative humidity, soil moisture at different depths and under different canopy types, and soil CO2 concentration. We also characterize the plant community in each of these sites by measuring plant biomass and plant diversity two times per year, and are also currently increasing our efforts to characterize the microbial community as well. One of the things we have learned is that year-to-year -year carbon sequestration is really variable in all of our dryland ecosystems and we can now relate this to thresholds of mean and variability in soil water content. We also know that both winter and monsoon precipitation are important for carbon uptake in all of these ecosystems. During these seasons, we can relate both the size and distribution of precipitation events to carbon sequestration. So, dryland ecosystems occupy more than 45% of the land surface across the globe and strongly influence the interannual variability in global terrestrial CO2 exchange. Our primary goal is to understand the factors driving carbon dynamics in dryland ecosystems, not only across our region, but also across the globe. Our work is important because it provides our LTER with an unparalleled opportunity to pinpoint the abiotic and biotic controls over carbon and water fluxes in many common dryland ecosystems here in the southwestern US. These ecosystems act as important natural solutions to climate change. Understanding exactly which ecosystems are sequestering the most carbon and how stable these carbon sinks are is crucial in predicting how atmospheric CO2 and thus how climate is going to change in the future.